What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add a search function to our TreeBase app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a search function to our TreeBase app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I thought maybe we'd be done with this TreeBase app, but a bunch of people are like, hey, we need a search function. And of course we need a search function. I didn't even think about that. So, so in this video, we're just going to look at looking up records by last name. We're going to keep it real simple to start with. And we'll just type in elder. We click search. Boom, the box pops away. We have things here. We can come up here. We can start over. We can add them all back again. We can search again. Maybe this time we search for Smith. Boom, we get Mary Smith, Steve Smith, and John Smith. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos. It's going on almost 200 now, so check that out if you haven't so far. So, all right, we've got our chewbase.py app. This is the file we've been working on for the last, I don't know, like 10 videos or so. And let's just come down here to where we made the menu in the last video, whenever that was. And let's just create another one. So let's add a search menu. And I'm just going to kind of copy this stuff down to here. And instead of calling this option menu, let's call this search menu. We want to put it in my menu. We want the tear off to equal zero. And here we want this to say search. And we want to put this in the search menu. And then down here, let's add a drop down. Instead of this being an options menu, let's add it to search menu. And let's have this say search. And for the command here, let's call this, I don't know, lookup underscore records, something like that. So, okay, save this. All right, so we've got that. Now let's come up here and let's define that function real quick here, just so we have something and let's just pass. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if this is working. So let's go Python tree base. Yeah, I'd buy. And when we do, we see this search thing. It says search. We click on it. Nothing happens, but that looks good. Okay, so that looks good. So to look up our records, let's create a little box that pops up. And I'm going to call it search. And this is going to be a top level widget. We want to put it in root. And let's go search dot title. And let's have this title be lookup records. We could do search dot geometry and let's put this at like, I don't know what, say 400 by 200, something like that. And if we want to come up here, we can add an icon if we want. So let's go search dot icon bitmap and put our little Kodami icon in there. Okay, so that looks good. So let's create label frame. So I'm going to call this search underscore frame. And this is going to be a label frame. And we want to put this in our search window. We want the text to say last name because we want to search by last name, right? And let's pack this guy. So search underscore frame dot pack. And let's give this a pad X of like 10 and a pad Y of like 10 as well. Okay, so now let's add entry box. So I'm going to call this search underscore entry. And this is going to be an entry box. And we want to put this in the search frame, right? And let's resize this, make the font a little bit bigger. So let's go like Helvetica and like size 18 or something like that. And let's pack this guy. So search entry dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 and a pad X of 20. Okay, that looks good. And let's add a button finally. And let's call this search underscore button. And that's going to be a button. We want to put this not in our search entry, but in just in search, right? We don't want to put it in the label frame. We want to put it below it, I think. And let's give this a text of like search records, something like that. And we're going to have to give this a command of something, but we'll leave that for now. For now, let's go search underscore button dot pack. And give this a pad X of like 20, pad Y of 20, just for fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what this looks like. See if we did that kind of fast, almost certainly made some kind of error. So let's go search. We want to search again. 
this pops up. Uh oh, something gone wrong with the button here. Oh, misspelled search. Okay, that's easy enough. Uh, da, 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 right there, search. There we go. All right, try it again. So we can click search. When we do, this pops up. We got this nice thing here. That looks good. We've got a button here. That looks good. Got a little icon up here. It says luck up records. All right, so everything looks good. So now when we click this button, we want something to happen. What do we want to happen? Well, let's come down here to the button and let's give it a command of, and let's call this search underscore records. So whenever we click the button, we want to search our records, right? Or we could call it search database or I don't know, call it whatever you want, right? So define search records. So inside of here, the first thing we need to do is we need to grab whatever we typed into that box. So I'm going to create a variable called lookup underscore record. This is the thing we want to look up and we want this to be search underscore entry dot get. Now we can't really do that because that's happening in this function and this is not a global variable. So let's come up here and make it a global variable. So let's call global uh, let's see, search underscore entry. And let's also make search global too, because we want to be able to close this window from the outside. In order to do that, we need to reference its name and we can only do that if we make this global. So, okay, let's go ahead and do that. And right off the bat, let's close the search box, right? And to do that, we're just going to call search dot destroy. Now we've already taken whatever we typed into the box and assigned it to this variable. So we can then go ahead and destroy the whole thing and it doesn't matter. We've already sort of saved what we, we need from it. So let's go ahead and save this, run it, see if that worked. So let's go search. When we do, we can type something in, we click this, boom, it disappears. Now, did we in fact actually save that to the variable? Let's make sure, just to be sure. So let's go print. And let's go look up underscore record just to make sure we have that. So let's save this, run it again, just to see here. Okay, so search, like here, we want to look up elder. I can search, oh, I misspelled records. <laughs> when we do, we close this, when we close this, boom, it prints it out elder. Okay, so we're good to go. So first off, let's change that search. Let's see, where's our search button? Search, there it is. Misspelled records, records, there we go. Okay, so now we're able to pop up a little box, right? Type something in, click the button, save whatever we typed into a variable and close the box. So now all we have to do is look up whatever we just put in this variable and we don't need this anymore, so we can get rid of that. So the first thing we wanna do is clear the tree view, right? It's got all of the records in there. We need to get rid of all of those. And we already sort of did that somewhere down here so let's go, let's search for remove. There we go. Remove one, uh, remove many, uh, remove all right here. So here, this clears the tree view. So let's just copy this and let's come up here back to the top and let's paste that in. There we go. So let's save this and run it to make sure that worked, right? So, okay, we've got this. We can search, we can type something in, boom the whole tree view disappears. Okay, so we've cleared it. Now we just need to query the database, pull out whatever we're searching for and put it back on the tree view. So that should be pretty simple, right? So let's come back here. And remember at the very beginning of our thing here, we query the database. So let's search for that and find that function. And here it is. And you can see right here, we're querying the database right here. So we need to connect to our database as we always do, create a cursor, do something, execute, and then we need to put those records onto the tree view widget using that, commit our changes and close. So I'm just gonna copy all of this and bring it back up here and paste it in, right? So here we're selecting everything. Remember that's what that star means. We're selecting everything from our customer's table. Well, we don't want everything, right? We want to narrow it down to a very specific thing. So we can use a where clause. So we can go where last underscore name equals, and then we can do a question mark. And here we can put a comma and a tuple, and we can go look up underscore record, comma, right? And this look up record is just this thing right here, right? So 
Okay, that looks good. Let's put some space here. And then we're gonna put those things to the screen, commit our changes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. That seemed pretty easy. Must have screwed it up somehow. So, okay, let's search and let's search for Elder. We search records, boom, there we go. Now we can search again and now check this out. If I type in Elder with a lowercase e and now I search, I get no results. Why? Well, when we did our query, we said we want only the records, let's see, where last name is, where it equals this thing. Well, Python is case sensitive, right? So uppercase and lowercase are two different things. Uppercase, it equals elder. Lowercase, it does not equal. So you may not want to use this equal to sign here because it's going to bring back a very specific result. Instead, we can use the like, and that will bring back all kinds of different results. So let's run this guy again. And now we can search. So now we can search lowercase elder, and it still returns capital elder, right? We could search again for, for instance, Smith. Boom, we get Smith. And that's all there is to it. Now, you may want to search by ID. You may want to search by last name, first name, and we'll get into all those things in another video. We'll maybe make a drop down box where you can decide which one you want to search for. That's probably more useful. In this video, I just wanted to put the basic functionality up here and uh, show you how to do that. So, okay, that looks good. So maybe we want to sort of restart the whole thing, right? So we've got three. How do we get back to the whole list again? Well, let's do that real quick. Got a couple of minutes left, right? So let's come back over here and find our menu. Here it is. And here, let's put a little separator. So here's one from a couple of videos ago. Instead of option menu, we want this to be on search menu. And I'm gonna copy this guy. And instead of it saying search, I'm gonna have it say start over or reset maybe. Something like that. And instead of look up records, let's just query the database again. Now we can't call this function, right? Because this function, the query database is way down here somewhere. Let's see, there it is. No, it's not too far down. But what we can do is just copy this whole thing, delete it, bring it up to the top of our app and paste it in. We also need to clear the screen because there's gonna be some records probably if something got shown. So let's come down here to our, let's see, look up, query database, search database, look up database. No, let's come down here to our search records and here we cleared the tree view earlier, right? Let's just do that again in our query database thing right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, run it, see if that worked. So we can search. Let's search for Smith. Boom, we get three records. Let's reset, boom, the whole thing comes up, starts with one, ends with 29 as we would hope. Uh, there's a brown, let's search for that. Search B-R-O-W-N. Notice I didn't put the E at the end. We got nothing. We can go back here, search again. This time we wanna search for B-R-O-W-N-E. Boom, we get Tina Brown. And again, we can reset and we're good to go. So very cool, very easy and uh, not that bad. Now I put this little thing as a pop-up just kind of for fun, right? We could add this down here. We've got a little space. We could just make our app a little bigger and kind of squeeze it in here if we wanted to. Maybe we'll do that later. I kind of like having a little pop-up thing. It's kind of nice. Boom, there it is. And we're searching by last name. Like I said, you could search by first name, you could search by ID. ID is probably better, right? Uh, you could search for email or address. Do we have email? We don't have email. Why don't we have email? That seems like something we should have. But you know, anything you wanna search for, you can, and it's just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships. It may just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.